Um, we got to do a deep dive into some comic books that we haven't yet referenced, and um, it's going to be a wild ride. It's going to start off really funny and end up really messed up and epic. If you thought that logo was strange, wait until you see this show. It's unlike anything we've done before. We're going to have a lot of fun. It's going to get weird. We're going to go deep. We're going to have lots of surprises. And we're going to finally understand Wanda Maximoff as the Scarlet Witch. Well, uh, it does take place after Endgame. There are some other characters uh, who you've met before in the MCU that will appear in it. One uh, of them, as a matter of fact, you met earlier this year as a little girl in 1995. So Lieutenant Trouble, Akira Akbar played her wonderfully in Captain Marvel's Little Girl. On WandaVision, as an adult, meet your new Monica Rambeau, Kiana Paris. <laughs> It's definitely a mix of sitcom and big Marvel action. So we will see uh, Wanda and Vision be funny, for sure, which they can be. And I've, I've found great humor in their love story. Um, cooking together, obviously. Seeing them in this environment that we're creating will be, I think, very special. There are plenty of comic books that support why both of these characters should be in a sitcom. It's definitely the oddest of all the Marvel uh, endeavors so far. Marvel has long wanted an opportunity um, for Kat to come back in her role as Darcy Lewis, and this really seemed like the right moment for that. And then Randall Park is so exceptional, and he's so great in Ant-Man 2, and it, it just really dovetailed with the story that we're telling, and we're delighted to have them as a part of it. It's super avant-garde and weird, and I don't think either of us could have expected to be going in this, you know, if we were going to continue in this, if we were going to continue in it in this direction, and it's so, I'm so excited, the scripts are amazing, and it's going to be just great to sort of drill down, that's what they say, further into these things. And instead, what he did was pitch this uh, idea for a sort of six-hour, movie that I would never in a million years, which is why he's the one earning the really big bucks, <laughs> uh, have thought of, and it's so avant-garde and weird and messed up, and then moves seamlessly into more familiar territory, but the place that it starts is so odd. I'm so excited. We get to play around with like a totally different genre with these characters that we have based in reality here on this planet Earth where it could also be exploded by aliens all the time or whatever, that reality. And we based it there and now we get to morph them into a sitcom universe and get to be stylized. We get to play around as actors, we get to play around with time period. Like it's just going to be a wild ride and then it's going to morph back into the familiar world that we know of Marvel. It's, you know, it's going to be a mashup. I mean, one always, Maybe not more. You always say... <laughs> in, Secret word is morph. Yeah. In these situations, you always say, we're really excited, but I'm genuinely, like, really blown away. As the scripts come in, I, they're just... They're the so work good. is so extraordinary. Never... Last thing for you. We're going to see you in the Doctor Strange sequel. Yes. So do you know much about sort of what role... Obviously, I'm not expecting spoilers, but, like, does this dovetail into that story? Yes. Yes, it does fans of the comics will understand all of the references when they see it and they will get very excited. It's a very fun mashup of these two characters, comic book world. Uh, you know, and it happens to be sort of a mashup between uh, a couple of our favorite comics that will remain um, nameless, nameless and, and also, uh, but also a mashup, and this is all from Kevin Feige's fevered imagination, um, a mashup of, of sort of American um, sitcoms throughout the eras, and and it tumbles into a kind of chaotic, messed up story that then ends up in more familiar epic 
Marvel narrative. Uh, oh, no, uh, the pressure's on. I said, I was told today, I heard that I was playing a, no, a nosy neighbor. So I was like, okay, that's how I'm going to describe myself. We, we, don't, we haven't started shooting yet, so we wanted to have something that would give a flavor of what we're doing. So we put together a piece that intercut the Dick Van Dyke show with footage from the Marvel Cinematic Universe focused on Wanda and Vision. And that gives you a little sense of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so something old, something new, something borrowed. <laughs> something. Anyone who is a big Marvel fan, this world that we're creating is fully inspired by comics that exist and they are also mashups of different comics that exist that are fan favorites, and I think we're finally getting to tell those stories in this form. And it's like a six-hour film. Right. Well, no, that's it's going to be great.